Hello there, it's Yorkie and welcome to the channel for the 10th episode of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione. And just quickly before we get into all the juicy details that are going to help you improve your lap times around this circuit, if you're new to the channel and enjoying this in-depth track guide series then please consider subscribing to the channel, it will be very much appreciated. And if you want to follow me on other social media pages, my links are down in the description below. So for this 10th episode we are going to be taking a look at Barcelona Catalonia in Spain. The circuit itself comes out to 2.89 miles which is 4.65 kilometers and features 16 turns. The setup that you want to be using for the circuit should be around about medium downforce with medium suspension stiffness and then the key action areas where there's possibility for overtaking will be turns 1, turns 4, 5, 7 and turn 10. Next up we're going to take a look at the pit entry and the pit exit and the entrance to the pit lane is just between the penultimate corner and the final corner just before you turn the car into that turn 16. It's there on the inside, you may need to slow a little bit as you come into the pit lane and then you will need to slow down and get the car engaged onto the pit limiter about 70 or 80 metres before the end of the white concrete wall that's there on the inside. This is where the pit limiter line is actually situated and then at the other end of the pit lane the pit exit is right next to the Barcelona Marshall hut that you can see situated here at this point you want to disengage the pit limiter and accelerate out down back out onto the circuit the pit exit line actually extends pretty far down towards turn one so make sure you stick to the right of that when coming out of the pit lane so we're going to move on to the track itself and we're obviously going to be starting off with the breaking point for the first corner. It's about 120 metres before the turn we're going to be breaking hard and shifting down into second gear. We're then going to turn the car in towards our first apex aiming to clip the inside curb which you can use in the dry conditions. You want to be careful with it in the wet conditions. The curb as you can see is serrated and there is a slight sausage curb on the inside here so you want to be careful of that. But coming off the exit of turn 1 which you'll want to sacrifice we're immediately coming into turn 2. This is going to be your typical apex point. Some cars will allow you to use the inside curb, but others you'll need to be very cautious with in both the dry and wet conditions as it can quite easily unsettle the car. But as we come out the exit of turn two, we don't want to run all the way over to the right hand side of the circuit where there's that painted tarmac and the AstroTurf. We want to stay just shy of that to try and open up turn three, which pretty much immediately follows. You're going to turn the car in whilst on full throttle and as we come through the corner you'll need to lift a little bit and coast the car through the turn to try and keep it hooked up towards the inside and then as you progress through the turn just off the inside curb as soon as you see a second set of orange painted tyre barriers on the outside that is when you want to be getting full throttle and accelerating out through the exit. Out here there is plenty of tarmac to run off onto, you need to keep two wheels on the red and white curbing to stay within track limits, you can use this in the dry conditions, however you want to be very very cautious in the wet, potentially avoid it if entirely possible, but we're going to stay out here to the left of the circuit ready for the braking zone of turn 4, which is just before we get to the bridge at the large white line that's just to the left of the track. We're going to brake heavily at this point and shift down into first or second gear, aiming for a very early apex where we're going to just brush the curb on the inside there, run the car a tiny little bit deep and then we're going to try and bring it back a little bit towards a second later apex as we continue to accelerate and turn through the corner. As we're coming off the exit of turn 4 though we don't actually want to run all the way out towards this exit curbing. You can use it in the dry conditions if you want but you want to avoid it in the wet conditions as the rumble strip nature of it will cost you the traction. But what you want to do is bring the car immediately back over towards the right hand side of the track ready to open up turn 5 and this is our breaking point. There's no real reference in and around here so it's pretty much just down to getting the flow and using your pure judgement for this corner. So turning in at Apex is actually going to be fairly late in the turn. You want to get fairly close to the inside curb. You can use it in the dry conditions, although you want to be very cautious with it in the wet conditions. But you want to focus on getting a good drive coming off the exit of the turn where we're going to use as much of the curb as we possibly can on the exit. You want to keep at least two wheels on the red and white curbing in order to stay within track limits. However, in the wet conditions, you'll be wanting to avoid the curb entirely to not cost you any traction. 
Turn 6 is pretty much non-existent, so we then come into the braking zone for turn 7, and we're going to reference the start of the curbing there on the right-hand side of the track as our braking point. We're going to shift the car down into second gear and actually carry a little bit more speed coming into our apex than you would initially anticipate. In the dry conditions, you can use this inside slope curb, pretty much no problem, however you'll want to be cautious with it in the wet conditions. But as we come out through the exit, we're getting hard on the throttle, we're immediately coming into turn 8, and we want to try and take as much off the inside here as we possibly can. There is a row of intermittent sausage curbs on the inside here, and some cars may not like you bumping over that. But if your car is good at taking curbs, then use this in the dry conditions. Keep two wheels on the red and white curbing to stay within track limits. However, you'll probably want to avoid all this curbing pretty much entirely in the wet conditions as the wet slippery curbs will cost you the run going up the hill towards turn nine. This is going to be our breaking point for the fast right hander at the top of the hill here. It's just at the end of the red and white curbing on the left hand side. It's going to be a short dab of the brake and then we're going to turn the car in and let it flow through the corner. We're going to apex roughly about midway through the turn. We're going to be using third or fourth gear. There's a slight bit of camber through this turn as well. You want to be cautious with this corner in that you don't really want to be using the curbing on the inside in either the dry or wet conditions. In the dry you can get away with brushing the curb. Some cars may allow you to actually mount it but the majority of them you'll be wanting to stay off it and instead focus on getting a good exit. Where out here we're going to use as much of the curbing as we can possibly get away with stay with two wheels on that red and white serrated curbing in order to stay within track limits don't venture out past that onto the FIA green curbing that's out there and obviously in the wet conditions like many exit curbs you'll be wanting to avoid this curbing pretty much entirely Next up is the final potential overtaking opportunity, which is the braking zone for turn 10. We're going to be braking about 120 meters before the corner. There is a 100 meter board there to reference on the right hand side of the track. We're going to be shifting all the way down into first gear and turning the car in. In both the dry and wet conditions, you should be able to take plenty of the inside curb here. You just need to make sure that you do get the car slowed down as this corner does feature some adverse camber, which means that the track is kind of falling away from you. It'll make it more difficult to actually stay hooked in towards the turn. And you need to get that rotation because the exit does tighten up on you. You can use the exit curbing out here. There is a yellow sausage curb that runs pretty much the length of the exit of turn 10. So do be mindful of that as actually dipping your outside wheels over across that can potentially unsettle the car and make it a little bit more difficult in trying to apply the power. Obviously in the wet conditions avoid this exit curb pretty much at all costs. We then come into turn 11, no braking zone for this corner, it's literally flat out just chuck the car in, try and take as much of the inside curb as you possibly dare just to try and cut off as many meters off the circuit as you possibly can and then we pretty much immediately come into turn 12. It's going to be a very short braking zone before we actually start to turn the car in and we're going to actually trail brake as we turn into the corner as well. Our apex point is going to be mid to late in the turn. You basically just want to hug that inside curb all the way through the corner. Be careful with it in the dry conditions as it can sometimes unsettle the car and obviously avoid it in the wet conditions. But when we come out through the exit, we're going to use the exit curb that is out here, although there isn't too much space beyond it. So make sure that you don't dip your wheels too far out or out into the gravel. Obviously use it in the dry conditions. However, do avoid it in the wet and rainy conditions. And then we come into the braking zone for turn 13. Again, like turn five, there's no real reference point for the braking zone coming into this corner. It is literally just basically judged off of feel and and general flow but when we turn the car in we're going to aim to apex here on the red and white serrated curb which we can use in both the dry and wet conditions what we need to be careful of is the large sausage curb on the inside here we do not want to be clipping that as that will very heavily unsettle the car and then when we come out through the exit, whilst we want to try and maximize the width of the track, we don't actually want to be running out onto the curb on the outside here. So try and avoid it in both the dry and wet conditions, as what we'll need to do is try and bring the car back as far right to open up the braking zone 
4, turns 14 and 15. This is going to be our breaking point just before we get to the gantry that extends over the circuit. We're going to shift the car down into first gear and turn into the first of the two apexes for this chicane. Both of the two apexes should be on the red and white rumble strip curbing. You want to avoid the large red sausage curbs on the inside of both apexes as clipping these will bounce and unsettle the car and likely take you off the ideal line that you want to be taking in order to get through the chicane smoothly. Coming out through the exit of the chicane we've got a sunken serrated curb to contend with along with a long yellow sausage curb that is there. In the dry conditions a number of drivers and cars will be able to take this curb to try and maximise the speed coming off of the corner. You'll want to avoid it in the wet conditions as the slippery painted surfaces will cost you the traction. And then we come into the final corner itself turn 16. There's no braking zone for this corner so it's literally just trying to take a nice smooth line coming through the turn. We're going to clip the apex at midway point. We're going to stay off the inside curb coming through the corners. It can potentially unsettle the car in both the dry and also the wet conditions. And then as we come out through the exit, you want to unwind the wheel, keep your foot fully planted, maximize the exit curbing out here, staying with two wheels on that red and white serrated curb because extending over that will see you infringing track limits. And obviously in the wet conditions, you'll probably want to be avoiding this curb pretty much entirely as it will likely light up the rear tyres and then cost you the run to the start finish line to complete your lap. So now that we've done a breakdown of all the corners let's jump in the car and see how it looks pieced together. So now that we've finished a semi-decent lap around Catalonia, I just want to finish off the episode by saying please be mindful of what your car and car setup is capable of. Some cars will be able to brake a little bit later than others. Some cars will be able to take curves better than others. It's obviously going to be dependent on your car setup. It may have a slight factor as well. And then obviously the weather conditions are going to play a factor too. Obviously I've tried to highlight these things where possible, but please do take note and obviously apply accordingly to the session, race or conditions that you're driving in. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing and if you hit the bell notification, you'll be notified each time a video goes live and you won't miss out on any future content. I hope to see you back for the next one. Until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.